Okay. So today, I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. Um, I say different, it's still napping. The difference is I'm not going to be napping a natural material. It's a man-made material called fiber optic. And uh, I have a blue fiber optic blank over there somewhere in one of my boxes. And I'm going to grind it down and I'm going to um, flake over grind or fog nap and try and make a nice Game of Thrones style dagger. I want to set it in a lovely piece of red deer horn that I've got over there. And I think that all together the whole thing will look really cool. I I've made one before and uh, it sold out instantly. Um, it was a big hit. I think it'd be really exciting to make one again. But this time, I'm going to bring you guys through the whole process from picking the blank all the way through to finishing with the varnish on the handle. The only difference is really anything you're missing would be the slabbing of the rock. But seeing as this is already a slab piece of fiber optic that's already in the right shape, we only have to do the grinding and the actual napping itself. So sit tight and enjoy the video. Welcome to the uh, storage corner. Over here, I've got a box full of obsidian blanks. I bring all these over from America. Because uh, right now, as the current time of filming, we are in the UK. And obsidian is incredibly hard to come by. <laughs> now, what I'm looking for is a blue fiber optic blank. I've stored them all like this to keep them safe. There's all kinds of little blanks in here. But I'm actually looking for a blue one ah, right on top, here it is. There we are. That is a piece of man-made, not natural, fiber optic glass. But this stuff is nappable. I think it'd go perfect for a Game of Thrones fantasy dagger. So let's get her into the grind. We have our fiber optic blank. And we also have our deer horn. Now right now, the two don't look so great. We give a bit of napping, a little bit of sinew, and a little bit of uh, pine pitch. We should have a pretty good dagger. The only thing that you're really missing here is the actual slabbing. Now, when we have a rock like this, gorgeous piece of Wiltshire flint, you would slab it. You would go this way, and you would have loads of gorgeous, just the right thickness slabs that you could draw on with a Sharpie, um, a knife shape, and then cut it out with a diamond saw. And then you'll end up with something like this. Already cut out the perfect thickness. The reason why we slab is because it makes great business sense. It conserves material. So if I was to do that naturally, you would waste a lot more material than if you slab it like this. We're still gonna nap, and there's still a lot of skill involved, but from here, we've got one more industrial, as it seems, step, and that's grinding. Now this is a um, man-made glass, it's fiber optic what well, your internet's running through, um, but in a blue color. And it's, it looks quite strange when it's broken. It, it almost looks, it's quite porous. It looks like skin. It's quite, um, all the grains will go one way, which if you create a step, it's a complete pain. So I'm gonna have to be quite mindful of that. But here she is now. The edge is a bit uh, chipped. So that's the very first thing I'm gonna tackle on the grinder. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grind this way, this way, this way, and this way and try and create a lenticular shape we should have the right platform down every edge leaning at a slight angle so that we can start napping the edge and producing those gorgeous flake patterns so let's take her over to the grinder it's a lapidary style grinder with a diamond top 180 grit now some people like to start with 80 or 180 and work their way down because i don't actually have a saw 
over here, what I'll do is I'll just stick to the 180 and give it the rough lenticular shape. It's water fed, comes through here, spins around at quite a high speed. And all the water will go down into this little bucket. Now obviously it's gonna create a heck of a mess, so I'm gonna put the camera just to the side. So we turn on the tap, it's gonna be quite loud. Okay, so we're not done, but I kind of just wanted to show you a halfway through kind of uh, shot. So as you can see, I've been taking away every corner and the shape is getting more and more lenticular as we go. It's quite difficult on a lapidary grinder because um, you, you can't really see the angle you're grinding as opposed to standing up and doing it on a uh, roller, you're doing it on a flat. So you get lovely flat surfaces, but um, it's quite difficult to see what you're doing. So as you can see here, most of it is in line. It's coming together quite nicely. The center line is off at the tip there, but it doesn't take long to pull that back around. Um, obviously I'm not gonna film the whole process because uh, it's loud and it takes a long time. So uh, I'm just gonna crack on with this and uh, you should see it when she's finished. Okay, and there she is, ground down. And she also has the um, if I can get it to focus, that platform angle coming across here that we're going to use to, um, uh, we're going to use some indirect percussion on that to get those flakes coming off. I'm just checking now to make sure that they're the right angle. If one of them feels a bit loose, so I might take that back over to the grinder. But that is it. Now we can actually do some flint napping. Some people like to use pressure flaking when they're fog napping. Um, I actually prefer to use indirect percussion. So what is indirect percussion? So as opposed to actually hitting it yourself like that, direct, you do it indirect. So you would hold it up against here and then use something else to hit it. You have much more accuracy when you're using indirect percussion, especially when you're using something as small as this. So what I'm doing is a copper nail insert into a rod and I'm holding it underneath my leg. I'm going to abrade, get rid of any weak edges, we're going to use our trusty baton that we brought back from West Virginia, I'm just going to match it up here, you can see the edge, there's no flake scars yet, no pattern, just going to line her up, and we're going to start punching, punching flakes. There's the first one. And now we're just going to continue along the entire piece. And provided we don't mess anything up, we should end up with a beautiful flint nap knife. Okay, so I flaked one side, as you can see, a couple of flakes traveled quite far, but we've had a bit of a disaster on this side. Right here, we had a flake travel so far that it came right across and took the lip off. Now, in the long run, that should be easy to fix. I'm just gonna bring that edge, this edge will come up this way a little bit more. I'm just gonna grind it down and work on this side. Um, but yeah, it just goes to show how powerful that indirect percussion is. The piece is still good. Um, it'd be a shame to 
obviously throw it away based on that. A lot of people who love the perfect flaking will um, discard this and start on a new one, but I kind of like it. So I'm going to grind this side down now. I've already chewed it. I'll take this now up to the grinder, grind this edge, and we'll do more indirect percussion. Yeah, this uh, blue fiber optic is stunning. It's going to make a nice knife. Just trying to get rid of this step fracture. Yes, got it. Sometimes you have to use a little bit more force than you think you do, which is incredibly frustrating sometimes because if you use too much force, you go right over the edge and you kiss the other side and then you end up with a funny looking lump. But it should be okay. I'm not too worried about it. I'll finish the rest off now with the um, with pressure flaking for the tip. So as I said, we've got a lovely flaking pattern, but unfortunately a huge chip out of here. And I'll straighten that up when I bring this edge in, and um, hopefully we can fix it. But if not, doesn't matter. Still got a lovely, lovely blade there. So the piece has been skinned, or um, has been skinned with uh, indirect percussion. We call it skinning because you're removing all the grime marks. I mean, putting in a nice flaking pattern. We still have that ugly little dip there, but um, that might get eradicated when we put the edge in. We'll see. And as you can see, we've got a little bit of an edge left. So what I'm going to do now is with this horseshoe nail, I'm going to start putting a little edge in. I'm going to do that by using pressure flaking. Just in and down. You don't want these flakes to travel too far. You want them to be short and sweet. And what they should produce is an incredibly sharp edge like that. And that is sharp. It can take quite a while to do this, and the best fog nappers don't even need to do this. You can usually, by the time they've done their last pass, um, the piece has an incredibly sharp edge already. So there, it's starting to get its shape now. So you can see the difference between that edge and this edge here. And that edge is quite sharp. Sharp enough to cut you if you're not paying attention. Alright, so I'm going to finish this and uh, I'll catch up with you when we're on the last bit.
Okay. So that has now been edged. It's got quite a sharp edge across the whole thing. I wasn't quite able to get rid of that step in there, that lump. I'm going to leave it because if I pull away from that to bring this edge up, I'm going to end up with a big dent in here. So I'm going to leave that. Now we're going to match it up to the handle and get her mounted. So there she is. It's quite a gorgeous. The bump in it doesn't take away too much, but it still is frustrating. And there it is. Gorgeous flaking pattern. And in the light, that stuff just looks incredible. All that's left to do now is measure it up to this piece of Scottish red deer horn and then mount it. So after we've got the horn um, cut, sanded, the piece is ready, it mounts straight in. I quite like the relationship between this blade and the handle, I think it's quite cool. Um, fits right. So all that's left to do now is to mount it. Now, I do make my own pine pitch, as you can see, it's just resin, collected and sourced locally. And it's uh, on its own, resin is too brittle. So we need a, a binder. And uh, I like to use charcoal from the fireplace. But I also like to throw in a little dab of partially digested plant fibers. Which is a very lovely, polite, posh way of saying rabbit crap. Um, you can also use deer crap. It's all on the archaeological record. It was all used. Um, I combine the charcoal and the rabbit, and the rabbit crap with the resin in my own pot. God forbid you use your mother's, you will be in trouble. Trust me, I found out the hard way. And it can create these little sticks of portable glue wherever you want it. So um, I will be doing a tutorial video. I know I've mentioned that time and time again, but there will be a tutorial video on these coming out. So just stay tuned. But now we need to melt this down and get it onto the blade. up that fiber optic actually went in quite well. I'm going to help it even more by creating more of a bond by sticking in as much resin as I can.
Okay. And there it is, set into the handle. Now, while the resin is still pliable, I'm able to maneuver the piece just to keep it looking straight and just the way I want it. And I'm quite happy with that. It's quite a good little combo, I think. So there's a lot of pine pitch gone into that. But uh, the more you use, the tougher the bond. So it's completely saturated and off camera I it's very fiddly but you break pieces off and drop it down in and melt it it really helps with that bond but I think we've got it okay so we have our sinew and we have our hide glue there's our knife obviously we also have um, a little uh, flint scalpel that I'm going to use to cut the sinew once we've got enough first thing I do Collect a little bit of high glue and just place it right on the inside here. And then we're going to start the wrap. Now, the first loop is always the most awkward, but then after that, it all falls into place. And usually, it comes together quite nicely. Some people really like the fiber optic. I've noticed at fairs, uh, people, quite a lot of people comment I have a fiber optic arrowhead on display and quite a lot of people comment on that, saying how much they like it, but um, I'm, I'm still not sure. I like it. I, I much prefer the natural glass and the flints, but I guess that's just uh, preference. Okay, so the last thing, and something I've been doing lately with all my pieces, is I like to do a little cross over the top. Just, there's absolutely no function for this, it just, I just think it looks neat. So I'm just kind of going back over myself and creating that little cross section there. Which is like the finishing touch, as it were. And then I do the last wrap. Just over here. Grab that little piece of flint. This could be a little bit fiddly, but once we get it going, it cuts. It's just a testament to how sharp flint really is. So we get some more of this hide glue. In fact, we get the last of that hide glue and we just wrap it all around the sinew. Just tuck those threads in there. And if voila, it's wrapped. I think the wrap really sets a piece off. Now all that's left to do is to sign it, which I've already got a space sanded off and cleared, and uh, varnish the horn, and she's finished. And there she is. The Game of Thrones slash paleo styled Native American fiber optic flint nap knife. Now this piece, by the time you see this video, will be on my Etsy. There you have it. It came out quite nice. I love the flaking on that. You know, some people would have abandoned it because of that chunk, but I'm quite happy with it. It stays, and when you get it out into the sunlight you can really see the effects of the uh, fiber optic looks like it's glowing looks like ice you can also see my uh, little helper down there Mr. Harvey there he is and there we have it so there we have another workshop session this time we worked on a man-made material as opposed to a natural flint or glass. The results, quite good. I'm happy with that. It just goes to show that you can nap anything that breaks conchoidally. Uh, you could do this with a wine bottle if you could have a piece that wasn't particularly curved. In the end, I'm quite happy with it. 
So there we have our Game of Thrones slash Paleo slash Native American style dagger. Every now and again I do like to work um, fiber optics in this case or um, glass slabs and uh, I will be working on them more especially when I get back to the States and I have access to a lot of that material so uh, stay tuned. I do have a heck of a lot of obsidian to work through yet. I'll also be working on some incredible Aurora Borealis style obsidian. I'll also be working on Midnight Lace obsidian, Spiderweb obsidian. These will all be in a few months time when I get back to the States. But for now, I've got a heck of a lot of Mexican black and mahogany, which will all be turned into some beautiful knives, which will all be staying on my store in the UK. That's to keep shipping low. Um, when I get back out to the States, everything I make out there will be shipped for free out in the States to keep the price low. So once again, make sure you subscribe, like, and click the bell notification icon. That way you'll get all updates from me in the future. In the meantime, thank you so much for your support. A lot of my products have literally been flying off the shelves, so I really appreciate that. And stay tuned to the YouTube. More videos will be coming soon. Thank you so much. See you next time.